So you leave off the desires, even with this proud in your heart. Then what happens? Martya amrito bhavati. We are all subject to birth and death. Circles of birth. Again and again we are born, we are, we are dying, we are born, we are dying. This circle will be over. You will become immortal. You will never have any death. You will become that. The only reality which remains absolutely deathless. Then, Atra Brahma Samashrute, the Supreme God or the reality you are able to see face to face in this very birth, only through by living of all desires. So, these are the two important things. You see, this is how Bhagavata tells stories, and in between, very, very important tips for our success in our spiritual progress is given from time to time. <clears throat> then he says, another one, Anyasya dosha guna chintanam asya muktva sevakata rasarzu nitanam vibhattvam He says, don't try to find out the defects of others. This man always tells lies. This man is crooked. This man is not honest. Do not at all look at them. Look at yourself. Do not try to pick the defects in others. And you always look at yourself. Find out your faults and try to correct them yourself. And, and then you just think of the Lord's disputations, stories of Lord's bhaktas, stories of the Lord disporting as various incarnations. Well, you, you try to immerse yourself in those things, then you will definitely reach your spiritual goal. And thus, finally, he leaves he leaves the house and goes away. The father is impressed by this advice and he leaves away. And the wife has already died. And finally the prostitutes kill this fellow Dandukari. In the meantime, Gokarna had gone away on a yatra, on a pilgrimage. Somewhere on the way he heard that his brother has died, his brother is no more. So, so many funeral rites, there are some holy places where we go and offer some oblations. Then, those souls which had especially, uh, uh, see, I mean, those souls which had originally, those who had committed suicide, they are not supposed to go up and they are earthbound for a long time in order to release them so that they can go up on the spiritual path and they will be born in a good family. So for that purpose, we do so many uh, rites in various specific places like Gaya. So he went and did all those things. He went to Gaya, he went to Badrinath, where the Atma Pinda is given even. So he went and gave all these, all those rites he did there. One day when he was just sitting for meditation, suddenly he found before him yeah, a smoky figure. Its uh, personality was not clear. And it came, it suddenly assumed a big form, it suddenly assumed a small form, like that it was playing. He asked, who are you? That ghost answered, I am your brother. I have become a ghost. Now I am tied to this world, but I don't have any body. So as such, I am full of desires, but I cannot fulfill them as I have got no body. So please do something to release me from this so that I can go upwards. 
I could progress towards the spiritual goal. He says, what shall I do in order to help you? I have done all I can. He says, you find out. It is for you. You are the pundit. You are the scholar. So, the next day, by his yogic powers, he stops the progress of the sun. The sun is going, he stopped his progress. He said, who is that fellow who has stopped me from going further? My chariot has been held up. And then, with prostrations, Gokarna asked him, what else can I do to help my brother? Then the son tells him, do Bhagavata. You recite Bhagavata, let him, let that ghost hear the Bhagavata, then it will be released. Then he holds a, a, a big Ayujan or what you call, yeah, the place where he is going to tell Bhagavata, he invites all the people and thousands, hundreds and thousands of people came and in between they kept a bamboo, yeah, because it was a tent, so in between they kept a yeah, big bamboo pillar and the ghost came and it was living in that bamboo pillar. And uh, living inside that bamboo pillar, it was with all rapt attention, it was hearing the Bhagavata which was being told. Both the recitation of the shlokas, the verses, as also the uh, explanation which he was giving in the afternoon. Both he was hearing. And throughout the night, he'll be going on thinking about it. Oh my Lord, what beautiful things he has expounded. I was never aware of all these things. That is why I have reached a very bad end. Now at least I have to. So thus, throughout night he was thinking of what he heard during the day. Thus, on the seventh day, see, normally Bhagavata is recited and its exposition is done within seven days. So in those seven days, he was able to reach a height. But the result on the seventh day, the entire bamboo broke and the ghost was released from its attachment to this earth and it was able to go up. And at that time, yeah, the yeah, Vimana, we may call it a helicopter, it came from the heavens in order to take him. The helicopter had only one seat more, only that Dundukari can sit. Gokarna addresses those pilots, Hey, look here, hundreds of people have been hearing this Bhagavata from morning to evening, all these seven days. And so did the ghost. How is it that you are partial and you have brought a helicopter only for him? You have brought an Airbus, so it can contain some 200, 300 people and it should all be released and taken away. Then the pilots are off and tell. There is a difference between hearing and hearing. If there are 20 people here, one of them will be slightly dozing. Another one will be having a sound sleep. I mean, a sleep with the sound of snoring. And the third one, even though he is sitting there, He'll be thinking of his uh, uh, mother-in-law, father-in-law, or his father who is in the ICU, God knows what. So he'll be thinking of other things. He will not be here. And this particular ghost was absolutely interested only in Bhagavata. And morning to night it was only hearing, then thinking of it. How many of you, when you went home, thought of it? When you went home, you asked your wife, what sort of a vegetable you have prepared? And again, we are all stomach oriented. That's all. So he said, 
If only you people here with the rapt attention with which this ghost heard in all these days, then you will also have their big Airbus and you will all go towards, go to the heavens. Thus, the story of uh, um, the story is over now. Actually speaking, the entire Bhagavata is now going to start. The entire Bhagavata was a conversation, not a big conversation, just a question raised by Parishit to a sage called the Shuga. And he gave the answer in one verse containing two sentences, that's all. The Bhagavata should end. But in order that its full significance and the various methods of approach to the Lord should all be imprinted in our mind so elaborately with a lot of illustrations of great Mahatmas, the Mahatmas who slipped and failed in between, the Mahatmas who reached the highest pinnacle of the glory of spirituality. So these are all being told. So from that it starts. And it starts with, see, there is a great sage, the greatest of sages. We call him the, uh, the guru of gurus. He was the first teacher for us. In fact, on the Guru Purnima day, when we worship all our erstwhile teachers and our own guru, our own master, then we start with the worship of Vyasa. He was there over a long period, during the period of Pandavas, during the period of the Mahabharata war, and subsequently, and much earlier also. The beauty of these great sages is, after attaining their spiritual end, they don't stop. They want that everybody in the world should reach the same state, the same spiritual state. They are highly worried about the entire world, the populace, if they are engaged in any activities other than the spiritual activities. <clears throat> and uh, Vyasa, for that purpose, he found the entire world was absolutely going towards the bad end. Nobody was interested in spirituality. Then he thought, this is because the Vedas are too big. There is only one Veda initially. Our scriptures, the main scripture, which is called the Vedas, there is only one big volume. Oh, this is perhaps too big for them to handle. So they are not interested. So let me divide them into four Vedas. So Vyasa divided them into four Vedas. He waited. A number of years went. Nobody was interested in these four volumes. Rig Veda, Ajur Veda, Swam Veda, Atar Veda. Nobody was interested. Then again he thought, well, people, not, people are not interested in simple uh, spiritual teachings alone. So we should mix it with some stories. Then he wrote the biggest of epics, which is called the Mahabharata, which detailed the 18 days war between the Pandavas and the Kauravas. And Iti Bharata Makhyanam, why did he do it? Because he found, yes, it is also perhaps the Vedas are not, it is meant exclusively for certain people and the Vedas prohibited that they should be studied by, say, women, say, a fallen Brahmin who is not following his, uh, uh, his daily routine. 
of uh, spiritual activities to such people. Sri Shudra Dujabandhunam Trikina Shruti Gocharam Iti Bharatama Akhyanam He said, see, look here, it is told Vedas should not be heard by the ladies. Vedas can be read. Because the entire thing is a sound effect. And there are portions in the Vedas where in the old editions of 1896 and all which my father had have seen, in certain portions while reciting they have written there, Garbhinya Apasarata. Pregnant woman should not sit here, get out. Because these sound effects will work like laser, certain portions. And they will go and the womb will be destroyed. Like the laser beam destroys the various cells, so the womb will be destroyed. That is why they were particular that women can read it, but women cannot hear it. Shruti Gochara, it is not capable of being heard. So certain communities were thus prohibited from hearing it, not because of the male chauvinistic attitude, but because in the interest of those ladies only, this was being done. Say, say for instance, in the Rudri a portion comes, ye bhūtāna madhipatiyo vishikāsa kavardhinā ye anneḥ vidyante bhātēḥ vipato janāne now in these portions it was written, I specifically remember, I was perhaps only 10 years old, I specifically remember it was written there. So now, when you are telling the Vedas, you stop it and then you say, ah, you all get out, you all come in, you all get out, you all come in. See, then the purpose of Vedas will be lost. So it has to be continuous. That is why they prohibited all the ladies. Not only that, there are verses, as I said, so it is a sound effect, completely sound effect. And there are some portions where, there are very rare portions, but if a woman hears it, she can become a man. She will become a man completely. The entire, her personality is changed. But the reverse is not given there. So for all these purposes only, see it's all in the interest, these are not being explained, but these are all there. For these purposes only, Women were prohibited from uh, hearing the Vedas. That is there. And when you tell it loudly, naturally you hear it. So you cannot read it also loudly. You cannot read it loudly because you hear it. Nor can you go and hear somebody reciting it. That is there. And the, after all, if you want to know what is told in the Vedas, you can read it. Nobody prevents you from reading the meanings. So you can read the Vedas. Now, after writing this book with one lakh verses containing nice stories and in between the philosophical truths have been put here and there, and uh, even though this has been done, he found people didn't take any interest. People were going on the same path towards that destruction. They were not interested in the spiritual path at all. Now, Vyasa didn't know what further to do. He has already done what all he could do. And he fell into a depression. Look here. We all fall into depression because we didn't get our promotion. Because my wife is not cooperative with me. But here is a case where they go into depression because the world is not following the path towards spirituality. This is the rarest of cases. And uh, he was sitting with great dissatisfaction. Oh my Lord, I have done my best. What else can I do? At that time, Devarshi Narada again came over there. Reciting the Lord's name in his vina, she came over there. The moment he saw Vyasa, he asked him, Vyasaji, you are a great sage. You are beyond happiness and unhappiness, joy and sorrow. What is it that ails you? Why are you 
uh, looking highly gloomy and depressed life. Then he says, yes, because I have done a lot, but the world is not improving, so I don't know what to do. Then Narada says, see, look here, in this particular period of Kali Yuga, people are not interested in philosophical. And not are they interested in purely stories. See, they are interested in how the Supreme Lord, who is formless, who has got no attributes, who alone is, she takes the various forms, uh, various incarnations, various avatars. She comes into the world just like a common man. She plays with us all. And what are all the leelas she does, the disputation he does. So this, when they hear, automatically when they hear the God's glory, their mind will become purer and they will turn towards spirituality. Yata dharma devsyartha munivaryan urnita natata vasudevasya She says, yes, in your Mahabharata, you have mentioned about dharma, the entire few chapters, like Shanti Parvad, you can tell only dharmas. What are the dharmas mean? The duties. The duties of a woman, the duties of a king, the duties of a kshatriya, the duties of a brahmin, the, the duties of a baniya. Like that, it covers all the dharmas. The dharma of a king, the dharma of a queen, what are all these things? But unfortunately, there are four motives in life dharma, artha, kama, and moksha. We strive this entire life for getting any one of them normally. Dharma means you want to build a charity, you want to build a uh, temple, you want to build a charitable hostel for blind people. You want to build a hostel for uh, anathas, that is, the orphan children. Well, these are all dharmas. Dharmas in this sense. There are, dharmas has got several meanings. So here, dharma means uh, something by which you get merits or punya. That is called the dharma. So, so, But you have not mentioned about the Lord's incarnations, how he came and played among mortals, just like another boy. See Krishna's pranks, they were all just like any other boy. So, to come and play with us, to come and behave like an ordinary man, at the same time reveal that he is not ordinary, he is uh, the Lord himself. So both together at the same time, these are all enthralling to hear. So that you have not mentioned in any one of your books. That is what you should do. Then, Vyasa asks, Yes, I was alive at that time of Mahabharata war and all that. So I know the various pranks. But I don't remember them all. I forgot because it is all some thousands of years back, two thousand years back, three thousand years back. Now I am old, very old, very ancient. So I don't remember them at all. So how can I write about them? Samadhina anusmaratat vichashtitam There is only one method. You go into a deep meditation. The deep meditation takes you into samadhi. What is the difference between meditation and samadhi? In meditation, you are thinking of the Lord, say. So, there is a subject, there is an object. The object is the Lord, the subject is you. And then you are there and the Lord is there. There are two. But you go on meditating, meditating, then when you go into the deep stage, 
it is converted into samadhi where you are not aware of yourself you are not aware of your body sense i mean your body at all the body sense goes and you are only aware of the supreme reality whose attributes are existence and awareness you are simply aware that something exists and nothing more so you have to reach that stage that is called the samadhi and when once you go into those samadhi stages there are various types of samadhis so in the earlier types of samadhis you are still aware you have recorded say some nice cassettes so when you want you can rewind it and you can see backward what has happened or if you want to if you don't want to see some portion you want to see what happens much later then you can forward it so there is a rewinding and forwarding so there are two processes you can see anything which has happened earlier and you can see anything which is going to happen later also immediately in the same way in the samadhi state you can do the same so in this samadhi state you try to recollect what is up then you'll be able to see the lord himself playing it will be a video picture and you can then go on writing samadhina anusmara tad vicheshtitam you remember all the you recollect all those plays of the lord by going into the samadhi state and he says see look here i am telling all these things to you how by by just hearing the lord's leelas and disputations you can reach the highest goal i am myself for instance narada says in the earliest days i was born as an ordinary man i was born as a boy and my mother was there my father had died my mother was very poor and she used to work in some houses and just get some money and there was a big charitable house where the mahatmas were housed and they were given free meals so there she was working this boy was very small say 5 years old perhaps and uh, once it so happened a number of mahatmas had come there for chaturmasya in a year for four months the saints or the sages do not walk about here and there otherwise we are supposed to be parivrajakas going on here and there peripatetic going from place to place but in those four months you stay in one place and then for the benefit of the local people you talk to them about god you talk to them about ramayana you talk to them about shrimad bhagavatam so thus they spend that time so these sages they came there four months they were there this boy he was very much attracted by those sages so he was doing service to them somebody will say hey come on uh, bring me some um, a pan and supari he will run immediately and bring the pan and supari somebody will say hey bring me uh, water in this kalash he will take it and bring it so like that he was very fond of doing service to those great sages and not only that you see to get their vibrations quickly we have a method after the great mahatma or sage has taken his food some portions will be still left in the leaves and that is called the uchishta or the polluted food when one man is eaten the balance is considered there in the this plate as polluted but that polluted food is considered as sacred in the case of great people so they eat it see even though he was a boy he took their permission first may i eat them 
okay, then he used to eat. Thus, he was getting the vibrations of such high sages. The vibrations of such high sages went and it was working in his mind. And uh, while those people were going away at the end of the f- four months, one of them took pity on the boy and gave him a mantra, O Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. Oh, my dear child, you go on repeating it. By repeating it, repeating it, repeating it for hours together, you will reach the highest happiness, the highest bliss through the intervention of the Lord. Then, <clears throat> Thus, when they went away, he was absolutely after spiritual duties. He didn't want to remain here with his mother. He wanted to go into meditation all through the day. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya, the Lord's name, he wanted to take. His mother told, hey, I have got only you yourself. I don't have any other boy. So you don't think of going away. As long as I am alive, you will be here. Well, he had no other way, but the Lord helps you. Soon enough, one day, when his mother went for collection of some flowers in a garden, she was bit by a serpent, she died. Now the boy was free, so he went away, and he was doing intense tapasya, and the Lord himself came and stood and talked. He couldn't see him, he could hear his voice. He said, my dear boy, you have done well, but not enough. So in this birth, you cannot realize me. You will do it in the subsequent births. But definitely I am with you at all times, so don't bother. So the same way you continue to have your meditation and leave your body the next birth. And thus, in due course, she was born as Narada from the, from the body of the uh, Brahma himself. He was born. So thus it happened. Then, <clears throat> now we are coming to the story of uh, the Parishit. There we are starting from much earlier. How his forefathers were. See, look here. The genes also work. If my father, grandfather, great grandfather, they were all spiritual, automatically my mind turns towards spirituality in many cases. Yes, there could be exceptions. So, Parishit's father was Abhimanyu, the son of Arjuna. Arjuna's mother was Kunti. So, what a devoted lady she was, what an exclusive devotion she had for the Lord, that is going to illustrate. Because now that the war was over, the Mahabharata war was over, so, uh, Krishna was ready to go back to Dwarka because he was a king there. He came only to help them in the war. And then the mother of the Pandavas, she was, she was an aunt to Lord Krishna. But Kunti Devi never saw him, saw him as a nephew. She always saw him as a lord, as a supreme lord. She knew his glories. He has proved it several times, again and again. So, when he wants to go, she is praying to Lord Krishna. It is a beautiful prayer and and it has to be taken some time to give you the gist of it because they also contain the methods by which we can approach the Lord. So, 
टुडे विल स्टॉप हियर हरि ओम ओम हरे नम ओम हरे नम ओम हरे नम गोपिका जीवन स्मरण गोविंदा गोविंदा